let's do something fun and a little different today. And by that, I mean, let's do this book tag that Tori from Novel Life tagged me in. I don't know if it was last week or the week even before that. It's been a while um, for me to get around to this, but I'll make sure to link Tori's channel and the video down below. I think there are what, 15 questions of just some different like fun book questions that I just thought would be something kind of different. Mix it up a little bit in here between all like the rec videos, the wrap ups, vlogs, that kind of stuff. Like let's just do something a little fun, add something different to the mix here. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I normally have really long drawn out intros. So let's just go ahead and skip over that and just jump right in here. So the first question is a book you tell people is your favorite. So with my channel here, I obviously read predominantly romance. I do still read some fantasy here and there. Ma'am, thank you. <laughs> but I predominantly read romance. And when some of my like friends ask me what my favorite book is, I always tell them a romance. But here's the thing. When I'm at work, or when I'm with like family and they ask or someone asks in front of my family what my favorite book is, then I revert to what is my favorite fantasy book because there's no way that I'm telling them that an ex's dad romance or a step-sibling romance is my favorite book. I'm just not doing that in front of my family. It's not that I have shame around being a romance reader, but when I'm in the workplace, I'm not telling people that I'm reading step-sibling romance when I go home, okay? It's corporate America, I'm not doing that. So I always revert back to my favorite fantasy book, which this is not a lie. The Throne of Glass series is one of my favorite series of all time. This is just my go-to answer when I'm talking to non-romance people. This is the first book in an eight book series. It starts out more YA or definitely YA. And then by like book three, four, it gets into more like new adult territory. It's definitely not as like adult as Akatar, but it definitely does go there in the later books. I love this series with my entire heart and soul. I love these characters to death. I'm not even really gonna get into like what these books are all about because this isn't really like a rec video, but the Throne of Glass series is one of my all time favorites. I recommend it to people all the time when they're like transitioning from being like fantasy to romance or even just like trying to get back into reading like some of my friends who have read more fantasy. I'm like, you all need to read this series. This is my favorite SJM series of all time. Even though I love Akatar so much, I mean, all these characters in here, I just adore them and I've been itching to do a reread, but I heard that there may going to be graphic audios made of these that I'm gonna hold out for because I've already read this whole series through twice and like that's a lot of pages so <laughs> I'm holding out for audios. Next question is a book that is your guilty pleasure. Here's the thing. I don't feel guilty about reading any sort of romances. Um, it's all fiction and I have no shame around reading like certain romance books at all. Like obviously my channel on here, I read a lot of taboo things. I don't care. It's fiction. Here's the thing though. This one, it's not, I don't even feel guilty about it, but it is one that obviously sends the, its origin more so that I'm like, you know what, this is just a bit of a guilty pleasure. And that is After by Anna Todd, the After series. This was my first ever romance book that I read. As you can see, this is a well-loved book. I don't like crack my spines anymore, but back when I was reading this, I was like, I need to be like in it. And I love this series, okay? It's so toxic. It's so messy. It's so like, everything that happens in here, it just like, it, always works out for Tessa like getting an internship when she's like a freshman in uh a freshman in college and it pays and then she like wants to move to Seattle for said internship and they pay her moving expenses like things just like work out well in this like it's a little ridiculous it's a little unhinged but I absolutely adore it they're, they're what got me into toxic romance I can't I can't I can't deny that okay next is a book that everyone loved but you didn't I don't get it I don't get it so I read this one. One of my friends and I, we buddy read a book pretty much every single month. And she, this was her pick. And when she originally pitched this one, I was like, you know what? I don't read Christina Lauren. It's not like they're, they're just not the authors for me. But I was like, you know what? Actually, I have some friends on here that have read this book, love it. So I'm like, maybe I so will. And one of, and a couple of my friends like outside of the book world even like love this book. So I was like, you know what? Let me give it a go. Let's give it a fair shot. And her and I were both like, what? Why do so many people love this book? I, I truly can't understand why so many people like this book. Um, it was so boring, nothing happened. And then this huge reveal at the end was all a misunderstanding. I, no, I don't even want this book anymore. I will end up donating it at some point. It was just bad. I, I truly, I truly can't fathom why people like this book because there was not a single thing in it that I liked. It was just boring through and through. Um, okay. A book that you read the fastest. So I have two because this one, it's like, you can kind of tell why I would have read it super fast. It's short, but that's always been you by QB Tyler. So this one was originally a novella in the Twisted Christmas anthology. And then she expanded it to be a full length book. And as soon as I heard that 
it was being expanded, I was like, oh my god. I was beside myself because I loved that novella so much and I was so excited to get more in James and Gabrielle's story. And y'all know, I talk about this book all the time. It's one of my all-time favorite books. It's my favorite from QB. And yeah, when this came out in its full book, I sat down and I read it start to finish. Oh, I got the arc of it. And like, as soon as I got it, I didn't move from my couch until I finished it. So granted, it's short, so it's easy to read in one sitting, but truly, like, I devoured this. I was so excited and just loved it. And the other book that I read the fastest, which this one is a little bit more impressive for me because it's, like, a thick boy, and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. So when this book came out, I was going on vacation two days later, and I did not want to take this big chunker on the plane with me because, like, why would I want to take this book with me on the plane? Especially Especially when I knew that I was going to be so close to finishing it already. So I was like, w as soon as you get this book, I went out at lunchtime the day that it released. I went on my lunch break, went to Barnes and Noble, got the book and then came back home. And as soon as work finished that night, I read it. And then same the next day, read it on my lunch break and read it again at night and I finished it. And this is like, what is it? Almost 800 pages. It's almost 800 pages, 750. So yeah, I read this one really fast <laughs> because I was motivated to get it done before I left on vacation. It was like Kingdom of Ash. Like that book's like almost a thousand pages and I read that in two days as well because I was just like so consumed. Next is a book that you, a book that deserves more hype. I've talked about this book a lot. It was a late read for me in the year at the end of last year and I just fell in love with it and that is Where the Mountains Meet the Sea by A.R. Breck. This is not a romance even though it does have a very heavy romance subplot in it. Just be warned it is not a romance and I just absolutely adored this book and when I first read this I think it maybe only had around like 200 ratings on Goodreads. I don't know what it's at now still just wildly underrated. This book is incredible. It made me feel things I have not felt in so long. These two characters are the definition of soulmates and like the right person wrong time kind of thing. So it's these two childhood friends who like fall in love and then their dreams take them apart and then they find their way back together years and years later and they've both been through a lot of things. And oh my God, I just like, I can't express how much this book like just affected me when I read it and that I still think about it all the time. This book is just incredible. Go and read it, go and read it. But like I said, it's not a romance, so don't come at me. Next is a book that is becoming a movie or TV show. I mean, I feel like this is kind of a cliche answer because it's literally out, but I want to talk about the Daisy Jones and the Six TV show a little bit. So I read this book last year absolutely loved it I still think Evelyn Hugo is my favorite Taylor Jenkins read book but this one is a close second and I absolutely adore this book and I was very very excited to see the tv show and I have some mixed feelings on the tv show I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it so now at this point when I'm filming this six episodes are out and I've watched all six there it's just I don't know the characters Billy is great I love Sam Claflin as Billy I don't love Riley Keough as Daisy I think like physically she looks kind of like exactly what I pictured as Daisy but I was talking with Zay from Witty Reads and Zay had said that they're almost she used the word quirky to describe her and I was like dude as soon as she said that I was like you hit the nail on the head right there they're making her more of like a quirky kind of like in my mind like manic pixie dream girl instead of like a really messy sad gritty edgy kind of person that just has this energy about her and just kind of this like no fox given kind of attitude. I feel like a lot of the characters don't look like the part of like this time period that it was taking place in and just like the overall vibe of the show. I'm just not 100% getting that. So I don't know. I'm interested to see how the last I think like three or four episodes are going to be. I'm still enjoying it. It's just obviously with any book to movie adaptation or book to TV show adaptation, it's not going to be everything you had in your head. And you know, you just always kind of have to rectify that. Next is a book that you have reread the most. Okay, I actually have five series that I have read the most that I'm just going to like rapid fire through pretty quickly. Okay, so the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. I think I've read this series three times now. One of my absolute favorites, Ride or Die. Say on the same veins, Hunger Games. Actually, I think I've read this series four or five five times even over my the, my life because I first read this back when I was in middle school and I've read it I want it's definitely been like four or five times and I honestly want to do a reread with the new movie that will be coming soon so that one I've read a lot um af oh after I'm not gonna pull it back out but the after series I think I've read four times <laughs> off balance by Lucia Franco my favorite romance series of all time I've read this now three times through oh and then Akatar the a Court of Horns and Roses series. I didn't grab it. It's up there. Um, I've read that three times, 
four times. Those are just series that I go back to all the time to revisit because they're just like my favorites and I like to do rereads of those frequently. So yeah, all of those I've read multiple, multiple times. Next is a book from a genre you don't typically read. So I don't, I read predominantly romance and I read some fantasy, but I don't really read much outside of that. But what I do love reading are like memoirs or autobiographies or biographies. So normally like I've tend to read like one to two a year, which I know is not a lot, but like it's something. But Know My Name by Chanel Miller was my top book that I read in 2021. Absolutely love this book. It's heartbreaking. It's infuriating, but like I just loved it so much. So if you don't know, Chanel Miller is the woman who Brock Turner uh, assaulted and she went by Emily Doe, I think throughout the trial, but then she released this book kind of coming forward and being like, this is me, this is my story and telling her whole entire story. And it was just like, hearing it from her, it's just gives a completely new perspective on this case that like I had seen and followed in the news. This was just amazing. I loved it. And yeah, that is a genre that like, I read more outside of romance. Like I like to pick up biographies or like autobiographies and memoirs. Next is a book that deserves all of the hype it gets. So I'm gonna have to go with Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. It took me a long time to read Sophie Lark's books, mostly because the more people tell me to do something, the less I wanna do it. And that was the thing with Sophie Lark. Everyone for so long has been telling me, you have to read Sophie Lark, you have to read Sophie Lark. And I'm like, you know what, then I'm not gonna read Sophie Lark because I just don't feel like it right now. I'm getting like bombarded. And finally, at the end of last year, Cheyenne and I, cause she also had never read Sophie Lark before. She was like, you know what, let's do like a reading vlog together, reading the first three in the Brutal Birthright series. And we did, and I was pretty blown away by all three of those books. And now at this point, I've finished the Brutal Birthright series and I loved all of them. The lowest score that I gave any of them were four out of five stars. So clearly like I enjoyed them all. And this series has gotten so much hype for so long from so many people. And after reading it, I totally agree. The characters are amazing. The plot is fun. The pacing of the book, like it keeps you invested. Her writing is easy to read. Everything about this series works for me and I'm really excited to get to her Kingmaker series. I don't, I really don't have any complaints about Brutal Prince at all. Uh, I totally think that Sophie Lark just deserves all the hype because these books were so fun to read. Okay, next up is a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. So kind of the one that I universally give because my reading taste leans towards darker edgier, taboo, forbidden. So I'm always scared, like kind of when people ask, I'm like, you need to let me know like what your limits are because I don't want to recommend you something that you're going to be like, mm, what did you just give me? So kind of the tried and true that if someone asks me for a romance book to read, kind of my go-to one is Sweet Dandelion by Macaulay Smeltzer. So this one is a student counselor age gap mental health rep romance. So the reason that I always recommend this one is because it gives you a little hint of that forbidden slash taboo-ness, but it's not like to me so like insane because Danny is 18 going on 19. She's repeating her senior year because she was injured. She was shot and injured in a school shooting and she had to take a year off to recover before coming back to school for her senior year. So even though she's recovered more physically, she still like mentally has a lot of things to work through. And the way she works through that is with her guidance counselor, Lachlan, who then ends up being her love interest. And it's very slow burn. So you like you see them fight it, like they do fight it, fight it enough. It's not like they're like, oh, we're just gonna like, don't care or throw caution to the wind and be together. No, they definitely take the time to like think about what could potentially happen if their relationship was found out. It's not like overly spice. It's like pretty low. I mean, there is like spice in it, but it's not like the focus of the book whatsoever. So like if you're not, if you're like getting more into romances and not like super comfortable with like Chantel Tessier level of spice, you're not gonna get that in here. And I just, I love the story. I love the mental health rep. I love Danny's journey. It's very character driven. And I just feel like this is kind of like a safe wreck to recommend people as long as they're not like triggered by like mental health things. It's just like a pretty safe rock for me to give where it like it gives a hint of what my taste is in books without being like thrown you to the wolves of like adopted siblings, you know? So anyways, tried and true, I love this book. It will forever be a favorite of mine. Next up is a book that has your favorite character slash characters. There were so many that I could choose and so many that I could choose already from the ones that I've mentioned, but I did want to try to include like as many as I could. So I tried not to like cross over answers too much. So I'm going to go with for this one then, the Addicted slash Callaway Sisters series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. So this one is obviously just the first book. I didn't bring them all in. Lily and Lowe are not my favorite couple, even though I do love them. Rose and Connor are my favorite. 
favorites. But this series as a whole follows like six people. It follows Lo, Connor, and Reich, and then sisters, Daisy, Rose, and Lily. So it's just, oh, it's incredible. Their companion series following the different sisters. Um, Lily and Lo, they, they're both addicts. Lo is an alcoholic. Lily is a sex addict. And they both like enable each other, but also want to be together. And it's like friends to lovers. It's amazing. Rose and Connor are academic rivals and just like two badasses love them and then Daisy and Reich it's an age gap a little bit forbidden romance and both just like free spirits love to be like outside outdoorsy that kind of vibe and just the dynamic of the group as a whole with the six of them and seeing them go through so many like ups and downs and seeing how they really always come out stronger together at the end and like that they will defend the six of them to the death basically like they are not afraid to throw down for one another but then also seeing the relationship grow between the three sisters the bromance between all the guys it's just oh, i just love these characters i'm currently reading the spinoff series the like us series which is their kids and like any little glimpses that we get into the core six as adults like i'm just thriving i'm getting that like giddy feeling in my stomach just because i love these characters so much and like chris and becca ritchie have just created such like life like characters that make me feel like I know them so when I see them I get like excited in the books it's just wild I, I love this series and yeah another one that like I feel like deserves the hype that it gets okay what are we on a book you wish you could live in here's the thing y'all probably would expect me to say like the Akatar world or like the throne of glass world because like who wouldn't want to live in a fun fantasy world not me because here's the thing I would die so fast also, I have like no eyesight without my contacts or glasses. So like natural selections picking me off when I'm like five years old. I've literally had glasses since I was five. So like, I can't do that. What do they do with people who need glasses in those worlds? I don't know, but it's not for me. Also, I'm anxious. I can't deal with that. So you know what book I'd like to live in? Twisted Lies by Anna Huang, <laughs> because here's the thing. Can you not scratch against the wall? You're probably gonna hear that. It's Dorian, take it down a level. The Twisted series by Anna Wong, specifically Twisted Lies, because here's the thing, if I could trade places with Stella, I'd have a billionaire for me living in a penthouse in his like apartment building, like luxury apartment building. I could be an influencer if I could just read books and make YouTube videos for a living. And uh, not even a living. I wouldn't even need to make any money because I got Christian Harper. Like, are you joking? Stella's loving the life okay minus the stalker I don't want the stalker but also having the fun friends the high rolling lifestyle I mean again do I want to go to galas no I'm a little anxious but I do it for Christian so <laughs> I just think I just think that that would be fun I'd love to live that life that's that um yeah that was shallow but honestly I I don't care right now um a book you thought you would hate but ended up loving that is going to go to Heartless by Elsie Silver so I read Flawless for a vlog and while I did really like that book I gave that one four out of five stars I really didn't think that I would like Heartless whatsoever because it's single dad uh cowboy small town romance like I'm like this is giving me nothing that I like I literally don't like any of those tropes whatsoever this book was five stars I loved this book it was so good I don't know what was in it that made me love it actually I do know Willa she pushes the child in a pool and I was like I'm I'm here with her I'm I like you um, I don't know. I just ended up loving this book. It really doesn't have anything in there that I like whatsoever, like I said, but it just worked for me. I really enjoyed it. Elsie Silver's writing is great. It's hot. It's smart. It's fun. It's witty. I don't really have anything to complain about with this book, surprisingly. Uh, 14, a book that made you cry. Here's the thing. I had so many to choose from. Again, some that are back there on this list, but I wanted to go with the most recent one that made me cry and one that like, it might be my topic of March. And that is Even If It Hurts by Marty Mann. So this one, here's the thing. I don't think that necessarily this is going to be a, it's not a sad book. It has an HEA. Here's the thing. I don't think that maybe if you were just like, uh, I hate to use regular person because like I'm a regular person, but this book touched so deeply on a personal experience that I've had in my life that it almost felt like Marnie Mann took this character and like half of this book and just like wrote my life in it. And so then I think it kind of like dug up something. It's a love triangle. Okay, without getting like too personal here. <laughs> There is the first half of this book like mirrored so much of my experience with the relationship that then it almost made me like I, I thought that maybe I have like moved past certain things but then it almost made me feel like that I was digging up certain wounds that I thought like I had closed. 
Dorian, I'm trying to make a serious point here. I don't know. It, it made it made me do some soul searching, and then how it ended, I was just devastated. I was dev. I think because again, I was holding out hope that like in my head for this certain character. Anyways, I don't want to like give anything away. Um, I yeah. If you if you want to chat, we can chat about it. But it just like it really impacted me personally and really hit like deeply emotionally with me that it had me sobbing love it um and lastly a book that you wish you could read for the first time again that has to go to manacled by Sunlin Yu. technically is this a little cheating too because this isn't even a like published book it's a fan fiction honestly i don't care because here's the thing this is the one of the greatest things i've ever read in my entire life it's incredible it's incredible so this is a germany fan fiction and it's harry potter meets handmaid's tale and it would be like if Harry Potter and them like lost the war in Voldemort one. I don't really know Harry Potter lore. You don't really have to know, know Harry Potter lore in order to understand this. Like it, you can get through it enough and like you kind of learn as you go. <sighs> I, 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 it's, it's just spectacular. It's huge. It's huge, but it's told in present. And then there's a huge chunk of flashbacks and then present again, it's heartbreaking. It's emotional. It's dark. It's heavy. It's, it's truly incredible and I wish that I could reread it for the first time. I want to reread it anyways. If I could wipe my memory clean of it and then read it for the first time, I'd do it. So anyways, that is this book tag. Um, I, I'll just tag whoever, whoever wants to do this. It was fun. It was something different. Switch it up a little bit from like the rec videos. Like I said, just kind of throw something fun in the mix. Fun for me to do, hopefully fun for you to watch. Um, I'd love to know any of your answers to any of these questions below as well. So go ahead and like comment what you would have responded to certain of these questions. But anyways, yeah, I'll just tag whoever wants to do it because I think it's fun. So anyways, thank you Tori though for tagging me. Like I said, I'll we'll have her video link down below so that way you can make sure to check out hers and that is it for today and I will see you when I see ya